I am in Rome, Italy, one of the most important and historic cities in world history. I only had about a day here in Rome, so apart from visiting a few Colossus attractions here, in this video we'll check out some other great landmarks. Right by the Vatican City is the Hard Rock Shop, but the Hard Rock Cafe is located elsewhere. Starting off here by the Castel Sant'Angelo, which was originally built as the Tomb of Hadrian. The popes later used it as a fortress, residence, and jail. Unfortunately, I will not be able to visit the Castel Sant'Angelo today. I'm going to cross the Vittorio Emanuel II Bridge, built in 1886. It has sculptures of winged victory at this end. There's a great view of the Castel Sant'Angelo just down the Tiber River. There is a massive statue of St. Michael atop the castle. I'm walking over to the Piazza Venezia, but first there's some great architecture along the way. Here's a statue of Marco Minghetti, who was Prime Minister of Italy. This is the Piazza Venezia, a bustling historic center of Rome, surrounded by grand palazzos, churches, monuments, and ancient ruins. There's also the Museo della Cere, an old school wax museum that unfortunately I will not have time to visit. That is the Victor Emmanuel II monument, a colossal monument dedicated to the first king of unified Italy. The monument was completed in 1935, right at the base of Capitoline Hill, and is a neoclassical masterpiece, utilizing lots of ancient Roman techniques, like the Grand Colonnade. King Vittorio Emmanuel II of Savoy played a significant role in Italian unification, and became king of the entire nation once the Risorgimento was completed in 1870. So King Victor Emmanuel II has clearly been very popular ever since, as there is a giant equestrian statue of him on the prominently located monument. This monument is also known as the Altar of the Fatherland, and also is home to the Tomb of the Unknown Italian Soldier. I would love to explore this monument more closely, there's also a small museum in there, but not this trip. The Piazza Venezia and Victor Emmanuel Monument are essentially at the center of ancient Rome. There are excavated ruins on the piazza, and behind all of this lies the Forum and Palatine. This is Trajan's Column, a 98-foot-tall ancient Roman monument to the Emperor Trajan, erected in the year 113 AD. Trajan's successes during the Dacian Wars, where they reconquered Mesia against the Dacians who had driven the Romans out before, led to the Roman Empire's most extensive borders. The carvings spiraling around the column tell about the Dacia campaigns. The column stands in Trajan's Forum, which opened in the year 112 under the orders of Trajan after the Dacia campaigns. It was the last Imperial Roman Forum to be built in Rome. Unfortunately, little of this Grand Foro survived. There was a colossal equestrian statue of Trajan here, along with a basilica and libraries which sandwiched the column.
That big structure is Trajan's Markets, one of the most expansive and ambitious features of the Forum. That is actually a reconstruction on the site. It was an ancient shopping center that had about 150 different types of shops. It even had some bars. It is possible to go tour inside the market, but I won't be able to do that this time. Here's a statue of Trajan in front of his market. This is a bronze statue of the great Emperor Augustus. And behind him is the Forum of Augustus. This forum was built in 41 BC, after Augustus' victory over Brutus and Cassius. The Grand Temple of Mars Ultor was located here. And here's a statue of the Emperor Nerva. Across the street on the Via de Fori Imperiali is the Forum of Caesar. That is the Basilica of Maxentius, the last ancient basilica. And there's the mighty Colosseum, which I did visit, along with the Roman Forum and Palatine Hill, which are featured in separate videos linked in the description. Here's the Church of Santa Maria Magdalena, just one of Rome's plentiful Baroque churches. And here's a building I've wanted to see for a long time. This is the Pantheon, which I think is one of the most important buildings in the world. This is an authentic Roman temple, built under direction of Hadrian in the year 118 AD. This temple to all the Roman gods has unparalleled architectural heritage and is definitely one of the prime examples of classical architecture with lots of Greek and Roman innovations, especially its vast dome. It is definitely one of the best preserved ancient buildings here in Rome. Later on, Christians thought that the Pantheon was possessed by demons, so it was turned into a church. The tombs of some historical figures are in there, like Raphael and Victor Emmanuel II. The towering portico of the Pantheon is incredible. The Pantheon served as a major inspiration for the American architect Thomas Jefferson. Of course he did some other stuff as well. His design for the library at the University of Virginia in Charlottesville, Virginia, and many other great buildings and monuments around the world were based on this structure, including the Thomas Jefferson Memorial in Washington, D.C. I was really hoping I would have a chance to get in there, but they have stopped letting people in for the day, so that is very disappointing. However, on my next visit, the Almighty Pantheon will be a top priority. Still, it is amazing to see in person. This is the Elephant and Obelisk. A stone-carved elephant holds up the smallest of the 12 authentic Egyptian obelisks brought to Rome by the Emperor Diocletian. Next to the Elephant Obelisk is the historic Hotel Minerva. Several famous people stayed here such as Jose de San Martin, the liberator of Argentina, Chile, and Peru. This site is known as the Largo de Torre Argentina. This grouping of ancient Roman ruins are quite important. These are the remains of four different temples from the Republic era that were only discovered in the 1920s. This was the site of the Coria of Pompeii, where Julius Caesar was assassinated. On March 15th, the Ides of March, in the year 44 BC, 
the legendary dictator of the Roman Republic, who was extremely popular among the Roman people, walked up to the portico of the theater where a Senate meeting was going to be held. Little did he know that a conspiracy involving nearly 60 senators, including Marcus Brutus, were waiting with knives drawn. They attacked Julius Caesar, stabbing him to death, ending his dictatorship, but unleashing a whole new world of problems and chaos in Rome. In Shakespeare's version of this incident, Julius Caesar reportedly said, A tu Brute, seeing that his friend was involved in the assassination. I believe that circular structure with the columns was part of the choria, so that is part of the building where the infamous assassination took place. This is pretty cool to see. The Torre Argentina is now a cat sanctuary. The site of one of history's most famous assassinations is now a hangout spot for local feral cats, who are cared for here. I believe there's a shelter nearby. I did find a few cats laying on some ancient Roman ruins, which is amazing. Now I have one more location planned for this evening. This is the Piazza Navona, one of the most beautiful squares in Rome. The Piazza Navona was the site of the Circus Agonalis, a stadium built by Domitian. This square was built in the shape of the stadium, so ancient Roman athletic competitions were held on these grounds. Later on in the 15th century, it was developed into the magnificent piazza with some incredible Baroque architecture. At its center is the Fontana dei Quattro Fiumi, designed by Bernini, and topped with a copy of an Egyptian obelisk. This fountain features four statues of gods, representing the four great rivers of the four continents, known back then. This god represents the Danube here in Europe, the others represent the Nile in Africa, the Ganges in Asia, and the Rio de la Plata in South America. Behind the fountain of the four rivers is Sant'Agnese in Agone. It is believed to have been built on the site where the young virgin St. Agnes was martyred here at the stadium for refusing to marry a pagan. There are two smaller fountains on both ends of the Piazza Navona. This one is the Fontana del Moro, or the Moor Fountain. At the center is a sculpture of a Moor, though he looks more like Neptune considering all the surrounding aquatic statuary.
Here on the other end of the Piazza Navona is the Fountain of Neptune. The Fontana del Nettuno, that is confirmed to be Neptune at its center. This fountain was designed in 1574, along with its counterpart across the piazza, though these statues were added 300 years later. I did get dinner on the Piazza Navona, which was wonderful. The lasagna was good too. The Piazza Navona is a majestic place. There's some ancient Roman ruins inside a more modern building. This is the Corte Suprema de Cassazione. This magnificent courthouse was built between 1888 and 1910 and is the highest appeals court in Italy. Down the Tiber River is the towering dome of St. Peter's Basilica, designed by none other than Michelangelo. I did go inside St. Peter's and have a separate video on that. I hope you enjoyed this tour and seeing some of Rome's most iconic landmarks. The layers of history in this city is overwhelming. It was such an awesome experience to finally visit in person, though there's a lot more to uncover. If you enjoyed this video, then please like it, share it, and subscribe to my channel. As mentioned, I filmed some other videos here in Rome that are linked in the description. Also take a look at my arsenal of other videos featuring historic sites, museums, natural wonders, and more across Europe and America. Thanks for watching!